Welcome to another video. As usual, I would invite you to give this problem a shot and if your strategy is different from mine, just leave it in the comment section. I'll appreciate that and I'm sure others can learn from maybe a faster or a more efficient way. But this is how I solve this problem. We are supposed to solve for X and Y, find all real pairs of X and Y. And um, I can see that this is not a symmetric system of equations because I cannot replace X with Y. I can switch X and Y because here Y is being subtracted but X is not being subtracted. But when you go here, both of them are being subtracted, okay? As far, as, at least as far as this is concerned. So um, it is not symmetric. And typically the strategy I would adopt in solving this is maybe add both equations or subtract both equations or try to generate the same term in the top and the bottom. And um, because it's X and Y and they're mixed up here, the only thing I could think of is yeah and this is in the denominator oh by the way obviously the solution cannot be x equals zero y equals zero so i, I want to state that note x zero zero is not a solution so as you can see it is impossible for x and y to be simultaneously zero because that will make this undefined okay so we know that cannot be our answer in case we get it in the future so what i'm going to do in order to generate similarities between this and this is to multiply the first equation by y and the second equation by x so that this will become xy this is also xy i'm going to have some xy here or three xy here i'm going to get um, some 3xy also here and by the time you subtract because since they have the same denominator things are going to clear out and the zero we have here is going to make our life a lot easier so we're going to go if i multiply this by y i'm going to end up with and then the bottom one i'm going to have what can you do with what you have here there's this huge temptation, which was the first thing I did, and it worked for me because I got one of the solutions, actually, is to eliminate by subtracting equation, this equation from this equation. Okay, let's call this one. So I did the subtraction, but when I got here to start subtraction, things were not as easy as I thought they were going to be. So the better strategy is to add both of them together, and you're going to get all your solution after doing some considerable algebra and that's what I'm going to do. So if we add these two together, see what's going to happen. <clears throat> this plus this is going to give me 2xy, okay, plus I'm going to add this to this. What you see, the thing I want you to see is that 3xy minus y squared over this added to this is mainly just doing the subtraction. So, and because they have the same denominators, it's going to be more like 3xy minus y squared minus x squared minus 3xy over, because they have the same denominator, it's going to be x squared plus y squared. And then this minus this will be equal to 3y. So let's see how this goes. If we simplify the top, it looks like this takes this out and you have, it's going to be 2xy um, minus x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. This is just algebra. Do you see that? So you have 2xy minus 1 equals 3y. Nice. So we've been able to generate a much simpler um, equation here. And which one is easier to isolate? We can isolate x or y. I think we should isolate x here. So that tells us that 2xy equals 3y plus 1. So that x equals 3y plus 1 over 2y. 
because we've been able to isolate x in terms of y, we can go back to either of the two equations and just plug in this instead of getting writing x, and we should be able to get a nice answer. I think this would be easier because of the zero on the right-hand side. Let's do it. So now we've got x equals 3y plus 1 over 2y. We're going to go substitute this for x in this equation and just get what the value of y is, or all the values of y, if there are many. Um, so we're going to replace this with 2y plus 1. Let's try and do the top. Okay, x plus 3y. Let's see what that's going to look like. So, x plus 3y, which is this thing on top here, that's 3y plus 1 over 2y plus 3y. Okay, that's x plus 3y, right? How do we simplify this? Well, I might as well write this as 6y squared over 2y. Multiply the top and bottom by 2y. So this is going to be 6y squared. Let's write it as 6y squared over 2y. Nice. Now we can add the two top together. That's going to give us 6y squared plus 3y plus 1 over 2y. So that is what you have on top here, x plus 3y. Now the second part is going to be x squared plus y squared. Let's do that. x squared plus y squared is going to be, this is our x, which is going to be 3y plus 1 over 2y squared plus y squared. Now if we work this through, if we square this, it's going to be equal to 9y squared plus 6y plus 1 over, this is going to be 4y squared plus y squared. But I don't want to write y squared because I want it to have this denominator, so it's going to be y squared times 4y squared is going to be 4y to the fourth, 4y to the fourth over, no, no, over 4y squared. Yep. So, if I put the top together, all I'm getting is going to be 4y to the 4th plus 9y squared uh, plus 6y plus 1 over 4y squared. Okay, now, just to make things nicer, you see, this is the top of this fraction now. And this is the bottom. I want the bottom of this also to be 4y squared, so I don't have to waste time solving anything. If I make the denominator also 4y squared here, this is going to change to, it means I'm multiplying this also by 2y. So this is going to be the same thing as if I want it to be 4y squared. Okay, so I'm multiplying this by 2y. So 2y, 2y, multiply by 2y by 2y, I'm going to end up with 12y cubed, 12y cubed, multiply by 2y, plus 6y, plus 6y squared, and this is going to be plus 2y. So now I have a rational expression or a fraction, a complex fraction, in which the denominators are exactly the same. So I can easily, if I divide this by this, I can easily cancel these two out. So the, the rational expression that I have is this divided by this. We're almost there because now this looks very clear. Now, should I cross multiply? Well, I can do that, but before I do that, notice that I can divide both sides by y. Because the numerator of this expression, every term has y, right? So if I divide this by y, divide this by y, what's going to happen is I have 1 on this side, and on the right-hand side here, I'm going to have 12y squared. One of the y's is gone, plus 6y plus 2. You notice that? Divided by, what do I have here? I still have the denominator, it hasn't changed. 4y to the fourth plus 9y squared plus 6y 
plus one because this didn't have a y we couldn't divide a y top and bottom okay that's why we divided from both sides so now we can cross multiply and this is going to be four y to the fourth plus nine y squared plus six y plus one will be equal to 12 y squared plus six y plus two nice so I see 6y here, I see 6y here. If I move this 12y over here, it becomes negative 3y. Okay, so I have 4y to the fourth minus 3y squared. And what do I have here? Um, I got minus 1 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic form equation because I can factor it in term, as if it's a quadratic in terms of y squared. So what two numbers will I multiply to get negative 4? But when I add them together, I'm going to get negative 3. This is like factoring a quadratic. Well, it's going to be um, negative 4 and positive 1. So I'm going to have 4y to the fourth minus 4y squared plus y squared. You see, I have replaced minus 3y squared with this and then minus 1 equals 0. So here, what can I factor out? 4y squared is common to both of them. So I have y squared minus 1, and then here I have y squared minus 1. So that tells you, if we factor out y squared minus 1, we have y squared minus 1 times 4y squared plus 1 is equal to 0. We know this can never be zero because this is always positive and plus one is positive. So this cannot be zero. The only part that can be zero is y squared minus one. So let's solve it. Cha da da. <laughs> so we have y squared minus one is equal to zero. What does it tell you? Y is plus or minus one. This implies that y is equal to plus 1 or minus 1, plus or minus 1. This are the values of y that we have obtained. We just need to go find what are the counterpart values of x. Since x equals, I think I remember, it was 3y. Was it plus 1 or minus 1? I think it was plus 1 over 3y plus 1 over 2y. So we have x1 will be equal to, um, let's take this as y1. So we just say 3 times 1, 3 times 1, plus 1 over 2 times 1. What does that give us? Top, ta -da -da, that's 4 over 2, that's 2. Hmm. And then the next one, x2 will be equal to 3 times negative 1 plus 1 over 2 times negative 1. Oh, that gives us, this is minus 3 plus 1, that's minus 2 over minus 2, that gives us 1. When x equals 2, y is positive 1. 2, 1. And when x equals 1, y equals negative 1. Now, I'm not sure if there are other solutions, but the other strategy I used actually gave me one solution. This one gave me two solutions. So there might be some strategies out there where you get more than two solutions, but I'm, I don't know. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.